Calum, what what brings you back to the library? Ah, uh, hey, uh, a good afternoon to you, Torin. I've yeah, craft good afternoon. I've been uh, well, I've been steeped in research. The past few weeks, I've hardly left my chambers, trying to well, trying to find a new, trying to find a new perspective on myself. Oh, well, if, if you're looking for perspective, the library is the right place to come. Got all sorts of stuff here. Indeed it is, and the library is looking fuller every day. Well done, Torin. Well done. Preserving knowledge within this library of yours. Now, what I'm looking for, uh, when I say perspective, I, I'd i like a perspective perhaps outside of the Fellowship. I've spent, as you know, I've spent decades within the walls of the Iron Tower, listening to what they say, reading the books that they provide me. If I could just learn a little more about how others outside of the Fellowship use their magics, solve problems, what they aspire to do and be, uh, this is the perspective that I that I want uh, as, a, as a figure within the Grey Library to understand and to a uh, perspective, well, I'd like to have. Any books within this library of yours that may show a different use of spell casting, alchemy, and the general outlook on perhaps the forbidden necromancy. Yeah, I've got something interesting. Uh, it's the first part. I think I think I might I might have some 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 future texts about this group coming in sometime soon. But yeah, it's it's a little on the creepy side, but uh, I think you can handle it. Ah, creepy. I've written the book on creepy, actually several books. They're all housed within this library. I don't think you actually wrote any books. Ah, uh, well, we'll call them journals, uh, Heinier. Uh, despite the fact that they've yet to be published, does not make them not books, Heinier. This, this is a scholarly perspective that you'll learn one day. This one smells salty. Yeah, it's from up near Point. It's probably got a little bit of ocean spray on it. Hmm. Give it here, Heinier. Hmm. Salty indeed. Enjoy. Thanks. I'll let you know my thoughts. On the edge of Fenrain, on the Far East Coast, on a dark and stormy night, three individuals are being pulled through the surf along a giant chain that's floating, strung across the bay. We're wet, it's kind of cold, but you've been summoned here to Herring Hall, an island on the outskirts of Point. Who are we playing tonight? So I'll be playing Ula. Ula is a mechanic, Dorver. Is that how you say it? I don't know if that's... Yep, Dvor... Yeah, absolutely. Something, something, something like that. Dverger. Yeah, yeah. She has large eyes, long dark hair, messy bun, wears a thick leather apron. Uh, for foraging, you don't want to get all of that hot metal on you. They also wear like a duster when they're traveling. Yeah, short, thick, wonderful lady, about 57 years young. Traveled all over in a trades caravan that went all over, selling goods uh, with many different people. And that's where they met Fossil. Nice. Yes, hello. I am playing Fossil tonight. I am a tall, ageless being who is known as a stone folk. I am most notable and easily spotted amongst my kind because I have fossils all over my stone body, which is mostly comprised of a limestone and slate mixture. I have what are known as ammonites clustered on one shoulder and uh, mostly other just leafy plants imprinted all across. And I'm very slow talking. Awesome. 
So you two have been traveling a while together, traveling together with each other for a while. What is one notable thing that happened between the two of you that made you want to travel together? So I think that Ula has been in this caravan since a child, right? So her parents were also part of this caravan. So people come and go who want to like either travel from one place to another and they don't want to travel alone. Uh And so sometimes people travel just so the next town or large city, other times people travel for years. So yeah, I feel like Fossil came at a time, you know, on search for something and we were going the same way. I think throughout, throughout Ula's life, Fossil has come and gone Kind of like Mm -hmm. the tides. Oh, I like that. Joins the caravan at some point, usually with strange treasures or scrolls or things that she found. They found... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I totally forgot a total thing about my character until just now. Yeah, something that they found. They found. Fossil, uh, as I called them a ageless being, um, I actually just misgendered them because I am inhabiting them. Fossil actually goes by Fayfair, or they them pronouns um, interchangeably, as what is gender to a person like Fossil? Nothing. So, yes. So perhaps um, it yeah, was. Come and you- gone. Yeah, I like that. And like maybe perhaps wanting to sell scrolls or something that they have already read and memorized or no longer needed or, or, or things just when they wanted to get rid of some goods that they no longer needed. Yeah, and perhaps um, as Ula matured and uh, became a uh, mechanic and merchant in their own right, in her own right, Fossil just found Ula preferable to some of the other new beings in the caravan who maybe were a little bit more arrogant or or like just talked over or underestimated Fossil, which Faye would take like some level of just like whatever with, but at, at some point it's just kind of like I don't want to deal with you anymore. <laughs> right, right. And Ula's kind of like a no-nonsense type person. Like, they, like she just is open to all people and really likes to learn. So I think, particularly grow, uh, growing up in a place where people travel for many different reasons, from many different places in the world, just finds everyone interesting. Yeah, and I do think as um, over the past maybe decade or so, Fossil has been staying with the caravan uh, more often than Fave been leaving the caravan. Maybe because they're getting older, maybe because this is just how it shifts. Who knows? The intricacies of Fossil's mind and how they think. (laughs) I like it. You two were given a letter. A letter arrived to your caravan some time ago. The letter read that some of you says, uh, The island steward, Gunter, says this. To my bygone children, blessed to me by the seas, I, a father, Gunter Buttonwhistle, needs you. I need you more than ever to return to Herring Isle. Life help me, for something treacherous has befallen my only son, Rowley. Rowley has gone mad. He is befuddled by what he calls scratching within my mind. He nor sleeps nor eats. He is consumed by this bewitchment. And to add to my problems, my adopted son, Eth the Seekith, has gone missing as well. Please, I beg you, come and deal with it, please. I am too weak with worry to handle this loss of my sons. I shall await your arrival. Sincerely, Steward of Harry Isle, Gunter Butterwhistle. The city you guys are being called to is Point. Point is on the eastern side of Fenrain. It's in the country of Gilder. It is known for its good-sized harbor. It is known for its shipbuilding. And it is known for what is called the Boom. The Boom is a huge chain that stretches across its bay that are, that's used to prevent ships from coming in. It's often used during times of war. Now, Herring Isle is one of the major anchor points of this chain. Point is known for its proximity to Longvale. Longvale is also known for its large amounts of wood production. 
And uh, one of the things that Point makes is ships. And so what was it that made you two to become known by Lord Button Whistle? That is an excellent question. <laughs> that seems like seems like a GM question, if I'm honest with you. Honestly. Um, <laughs> no. So, I mean, if... If he is someone who needs work, like a mechanic or other other things or goods, you know, perhaps uh-huh. like I would say that like the caravan's well known, right? Like maybe not specific people in the caravan always. Maybe if they traveled for years, because um, how I imagine it is that certain goods and crafts people that travel with this caravan like you can only get those goods when they come into town or sometimes they look forward to a certain times of year because you're kind of chasing you know the warmer weather as you go around so you know bringing things from the last town over to the other town so so if mr uh butter whistle gunter if gunter knows una from the caravan because they have come and purchased goods wonderful let us begin by seeing what the amount of life and death points we have. Light side, dark side. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like death is on our side. So what do the light and dark side do? <laughs> uh, so these are your story points. So currently... Oh, okay, okay. Oh, no. (laughs) These are our story points. Yep. This this means that we want to introduce something to our game. Uh, You can flip and introduce Mm -hmm. something cool or something uh, that would be advantageous to you. If you flip a, a life point, you can upgrade your role. You can flip to upgrade my role as a GM. So... As of right now, you have two light side and three dark side points, which I think is very important to have a good amount of them, especially since we will be rolling. On a small barge being pulled through the surf, Fossil and Ula find themselves pulling up to the dock of Herring Isle. The waves crash, the lightning crashes, and we pull up to the aisle. Waiting for you on the aisle in an oiled cloak and a bright lamp is a stone folk. He grabs, helps anchor the barge to the dock, secures it for you, and welcomes you. Hello. Welcome back to Herring Isle. I am Agate. I am here at your service. Your rooms are ready. Please, Come dry yourselves off by the fire. The master awaits you. Thank you, Agate. And Ula tips Agate. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Such politeness is a rarity on islands these days. Oh, I know that is not easy to pull in a ship by yourself, even as big a stronger man like you. Oh, thank you. I do like my compliments. Now come, you must be getting cold. We don't want your blood to cool. Oh no, I am very warm, but let's get in. I do not wish my hair to be too wet. I have space under the umbrella, Ula. I'm going to flip a dark side point as you (laughs) open up your umbrella. It takes off into the sea as a rogue gust whooshes it off. (laughs) It appears I do not have space. Ah, it's all fine, my friend. A little bit of rain never hurt anyone. After all, I am not made of sugar. You guys make your way to Herring Hall. Herring Hall is a multi-story tower at the base of the hall. are large stones with worn glyphs from long ago. Newer construction, you can see, has been built onto it, as is a lot of point. You can hear the raking of metal on stone as the surf moves the giant boom chain from underneath it. As you cross over a small bridge, you can see the chain down below 
grating in the surf. The large wooden doors open with a creak, and you're met with the sound of song and laughter and the clinking of some clay cups. There sits a Kanara next to the fire singing. He's going, oh, poor Heathkith, poor Heathkith, whatever you've been fishing for. And he goes on and on. I love this song. Finally, one of the serving ladies uh, bumps him and as they notice that two new people have arrived. Agate offers to take your cloaks or whatever gear to be dried out and taken care of. I would love to assist you in drying out. Would you like a towel at a spot by the fire? Absolutely. Yes, Please. the fire sounds good. Come this way. As you guys approach, you notice that, that this entry room has a large fire with uh, many large chairs, uh, many of which are empty. There's a large wood bar that's back set with many nice cutlery, but the majority of people are drinking out of clay cups. There seems to be only locals here. There's not many people in finery in this place. Will you guys, you want to roll something? Let's see. Why don't we start off <laughs> with, do you want to roll a knowledge check to see what you know about point or maybe a vigilance check to see what you notice about Herring Hall, what you might know. Do you want both of us or I feel like Fossil is like the one to ask. (laughs) I want to notice things because I'm already giving the troubadour a little bit of a look. I know troubadours like to sing about current events, but to sing such a jaunty tune about someone who is missing seems of poor taste. But would that be a um, a roll uh, two greens for uh, vigilance with no ranks? So vigilance GG. with no ranks. Let's go. Well, that, we're not doing initiative, so let's go with let's make it a three purple check. Okay, so dot r g g p p p. Okay. <laughs> Zero successes. It looks like a wash. Is that a it wash? It looks like that is an absolute wash. It's a lot of numbers and or a lot of symbols coming up. I'm concerned yeah. with making sure my my uh, my spear and my dulcimer are dry. Oh yes. <laughs> and that that is exactly it. Uh, the moment you start, you pull out an instrument uh, to make sure it's dry and take care of, the Kanara puts his one away all at the same time. After having some looks taken care of, uh, he goes off and to uh, the other end of the bar and starts. Looks like he's going to start wiping down some tables. Ula, what would you like to roll about? I think that Ula would like to just kind of assess the crowd of people that are that are there, because as someone who you know, makes money from making things and uh-huh. and who uh, I just think that they would know people, right? So sure. I think that they want to like look, see if they recognize anybody, kind of just like, you know, what the state is. Like, does this really seem jolly? Like, <laughs> this is not what Ula was expecting to walk into. Mm. So would that be vigilance or? I could see using vigilance. I could see uh, if you're trying to see the temperament you could try to charm them if you're trying to get information out of them so i mean charm charm fits ula like she doesn't have yeah. any ranks in it but that's fine the majority of the time i i uh i don't have <laughs> ranks in anything that i have that i roll so that's just exactly how it goes all right so on my sheet it says three green what is that so is all that right what so I roll? yep yep one Ooh. success, one advantage on your charm check. So I think Ula looks around and does see someone uh-huh. um, that she knows. Okay. Let's see. Who do you know? There are several people in here. There is a Kanara that you have heard. There's mm-hmm. Agatha the Butler. Mm-hmm. There are a couple of Isians. Those are the bird folk. And they're is a small grinker in the corner with a lamp 
and a book? Um, I think Ula is going to walk up to the person that was just singing the Kanara. Oh, yeah. Did you say you you knew this person? Yeah, I did say I did say that I knew them. So, OK, yeah, you know, this Kanara as Roscoe. OK. Oh, Roscoe, my friend. What a tone you are singing. I, I, it's, it's you, Ula. I haven't seen you in, oh, it, it's been a while. How have you been? Oh, yes, it's been very many moons. It's been good. You know how the road is. It's good. It's hard. It's great. It's wonderful. It's hard. You it's know? hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't really care for traveling, you know, because I like my bed. I, I I like all the amenities that I have in my room here. If you go out there, well, first you got to cross the water, which I don't like. Then you got to travel <laughs> on bumpy roads and the dust, and you can see your paws. And it makes your 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 loot out of tune. And oh yes, yes, this is this is true. It's very dusty out there. But my friend, if you don't leave, how will you ever know what's beyond the borders? You can imagine the scenes that I have seen and the food that I have tasted. Oh, it is magical hey, out there. You know, I, I know what you're saying and I hear it. I accept it. <laughs> That's why I, I go. I, I like to spend my summers more so on the mainland and not out here. But you know how it goes. You know, you get uh, stuck yes. up here and you, you got to do your job. Hey, the ocean is very nice, too. You know, the ocean will eat you alive. That's <laughs> kind of how I ended yes. up here. Remember that <laughs> I ended up here because our family barge wrecked here and the wonderful button whistles took me in. Okay. The ocean could keep to itself. <laughs> this is true. You, you, you should probably stay on land. It is definitely not for the weak or timid. You play very nice songs. You need to keep that voice and those hands safe. Hmm? That's what I, that's what I'm saying. All right. You have an advantage. What would you like your advantage to be? It can be, a bonus to something, a little extra piece of information. Gossip. I would say the advantage is <laughs> I want to know what the gossip is around this manor. Oh, well, you have charmed them and you do have an advantage. Yeah. So ask your question. So, uh, Roscoe, perhaps you heard that the, that, uh, Gunther's sons, one is one is mad and one is missing. Have have you heard what is going on in the manor? What is going on here? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, did you get a letter? Yes, yes, oh, I got a letter. Found yeah. me in the caravan. I was traveling very far away. Oh, good. I I had to go mail those out. Yeah, um, yeah. Rowley. He looks around. He looks to his left, to his right. Looks behind him. He goes, yeah. Uh, R- Rally, Rally's not all 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 here anymore. He uh, he went a little cuckoo, you know. Um, but in what way? What is he? What is he doing? That people are saying this about Rally. This is not how I remember Rally. No, uh, well, you don't remember Rally. Rally was, I uh, he was he was kind of a jerk. Well, jerks are not always crazy though. They just do some rudeness. I have definitely taken him by the ear a time or two. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, Rowley. Okay. You remember Rowley. Rowley goes around. He's a no good, dirty fink. Sorry. You know, he looks around. He goes, but but it's true. You know, he was always getting in with the bad crowds. You know, he was he was tarnishing the button whistle name. You know, he was. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. He was even stealing from the orphanage fund. Can you believe it? But that's <gasps> oh, just a rumor. You goodness. didn't hear it from me. I know. Oh, it's terrible. How could somebody do this? It's, it's so fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You know, uh, being the only surviving son of Gunther, uh, that, that's a pretty good thing. That's a pretty good thing. You get all of this. So all who were these people that he was hanging out with? Well, you know, you know, he was hanging out with poor old Eth, the sea kith, you know, but that's like his brothers just going around, you know, getting to no good stuff. You know, they were fishing, you know, in all the wrong places. And, uh, you know, ever since Eth lost his hand in the accident, uh, which, you know, he was never the same. He lost his hand? 
I did not. I did not know this. What accident? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, um, uh, this is my friend Fossil. I really, I really wanted to say much. that when he looked behind him, there was Fossil. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, you. Oh, maybe, maybe you didn't hear. Yeah, poor Eth. He was. Uh, it happened a couple years back. He was working. They were working on the chain. They were fishing down there. Now you know you're not supposed to be working around the chain because it's always shifted. But rumor has it that, uh, well, he got his hand caught in it. And uh, goodbye, goodbye. Now your hand is fish food. Oh so, my goodness. Yep. I, was, I suppose I shouldn't say it like that. See, kids. Well, this hand is being true. Fish food. Fish being fish food. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah. The fishing, I'm to... sure, was good the next few days. I mean, come he's on. Fish food. He's fish food. Oh, what can <laughs> no. You do? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I did not. That's, I did not realize. I did bad. not realize. Sorry, it's in the blood. I, I can't help but make up songs as we go. But yeah. So, Eve the Sea Kiss has been gone for quite a while now. And shortly after that, Rowley just started uh, kind of hearing. He came to me one night and said he started hearing sounds, like scratching sounds, like metal against bone, metal against like stone. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Scratch, but not until after, uh, not till after Ethan left. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, how is Gunther? He must be feeling so miserable. Oh, poor master. He's he's been. He's been under the weather. He, you know, all he does is sit up in his in his room with the fire blazing. He can't get warm. You, you probably ought to go see him. You know, he, he was the one who kind of called you here. So but tell I, me, what are all these people doing here? It seems like a celebration. Oh. Did they also get letters? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they, they got letters because they're all kind of part, part of us here. You know, uh. I think you guys probably got your letter because it was your caravan that Eth got his uh, mechanical hand from. Mm. He wasn't oh, satisfied yes. just with the little pitchfork, you know, the little trident hook that he had. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool. You know, he was like a built-in <laughs> fondue guy, you know. Yes, he, oh. <laughs> I remember. I, I recommended Ula for the job. I did not realize I, who the hand I was making for. Oh, this... I, I had no idea. I would have come sooner and fitted it for him myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, so you want some introductions? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, who do we have? We got... Uh, well, we'll start with the lovely little Granker in the back. That is Miss Dell. She's our teacher for the orphanage. She's quite nice. It's not every day you get a Granker in the orphanage teaching that's kind of prestigious yep we're trying to uh, elevate our uh, our standing and uh, the Isians, they're miss mist and mr nestor they're they take care of the children and you know of course you know me roscoe and you met agate and uh that's pretty much it you know uh M miss ingrid our beloved mother uh she she's somewhere about the manor but it being the off season, you know, we don't get a lot of visitors. Yeah, so most of the people that got a letter live close, yes? They live close or they've been out and about, yeah. Oh, I see. Well, Fossel, mm. do you think that we should visit Mr. Gunther? If he is prepared to receive us, of course. Is the master prepared to see us or shall we... Agat did mention something about the rooms. Yes, your rooms are prepared. If you would like to shed your belongings, they can go there. Then we can go see the master of Herring Hall. Very good. I would like to set down my suitcase. Fossil follows along, but keeps uh, Fair Dulcimer, Dulcimer and a spear uh, with Fair. Very wise, very wise. As Agate takes you upstairs, higher and higher to the next rooms, he'll point out the various architecture of Herring Hall, talking about how ageless it is, how these runes have yet to be deciphered. Whether they are old or just worn that way is something to be known and 
And uh, here we are. Here are your rooms. Would you like a room together or apart? I did not take your request before. Together, I believe. Yes, that works very well for me. Faso and I have traveled many places. We prefer to stay together. The caravan is very communal, anyway. (laughs) Very wise, very wise. This is a little room for one person. We have so much room in here, we can fit like 10, 20 people in here. Well, not the size of Fastel, of course, but others. Yes, uh, many of the new folk, the Anzas, like to have their own room where they can lounge about as they please. Such luxury. Ah, yes. The master is right this way, if you're ready. Thank you, friend. As you go down the hall, the wood is dry. The hall is loud. The runners on the floor are old woven carpets of sorts. And they seem to be on the drier side, and dustier side, as if the master doesn't want people around. You enter his chamber through a large wooden door and there in the room is a large large chair before the fire full of horns and furs and in there sits a man I think that Ula probably knows Gunther a little bit more personally so I think that she'll go uh Gunther, my friend, I have received your letter. A long-haired, disheveled man whose wrinkles are ever-present, his eyes are almost sunken in. He is a man who has bright, mad eyes that seem to be red with tears. His teeth are, are chattered and dry from the weeping and hushed tones that he keeps talking to himself. He he goes, oh, you, you, you came. All good. All good. You, you, you came. It's, it's been, it's been horrible. He, my, my son, I, I can't, I don't want to lose another one. I lost, can't find, I can't help. I don't want to lose another one. I can't lose my sons. It's oh, all I have. My... It's all I have. Oh, Ula. they're there. They're oh. there. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, this is no. very, Fossil very looks sad. to see if there's any water to serve him. <laughs> yes, there, there, is, uh, there is a pitcher uh, of fresh water and uh, fine gl- uh, steins and stuff like that to serve. Yeah, I, I, I pour a cup. Yeah. And I'm uh, like, he, all will be okay. He takes a cup and it shivers and shakes as he, it water spills over him as he tries to take a drink of it. Oh, thank, thank you. You, you. You have always taken good care of my, me and my family. Did Your he trades. drink it? Yeah, he, he drank some of it, yeah. Okay. Uh, he, I think more fell on him, uh, trickles down his beard and onto his, his lap, which is covered in skins and like a bear hide to keep him warm. He goes, I just can't seem to keep warm these days. It's, it's, it's got to be this worry. Maybe I maybe I need to go to the main island where it's warmer. Oh, my bones, they can't handle it out here. Maybe it's just the worry. Have you seen my son? Have you, have you heard from him? Do you know where he is? We've only just arrived, sir. Good, good. I, I, I'm glad you. I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. I'm glad he looks around back and forth. I, I'm glad you. You two came. I'm glad you two came. Of course we would come. We cannot have uh, hear of your sons missing and one not well. You and you are chilled to the bone. What's the, what, how? How long has this been? Oh, it's been ever since they've been gone. Ever since. Eth went missing. I I can't be beside myself. I've been beside myself. I, and then my poor boy Rowley, would, I think he's going mad. I hope he can find the light once again. I just don't want him going down to the rivers. 
It's too soon. I don't need the waters taking another family. I don't need them taking another son. Oh no, the rivers have had enough. Surely they must be full now and don't want anything to do with your son. Have you, have you spoken to anyone else about this? Oh, I've sent letters to various orphans that we've raised, various friends that might have helped us, but very few have ever come. Very few have ever returned to help. Oh. How long has this been going on for? Months. 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 It's happened for months. Oh no, my friend. Despair, though I have never had children of my own, I do understand this must be so terrible for you. Oh, they're a blessing and a curse. They're a blessing and a curse. Uh, is there is there anything that we can do to make you more comfortable? I would love to see, I would love to see Raleigh, but but can I comfort you first? Can I see Raleigh even? Oh yes, you may go find him. He's. Somewhere in our manor. I, I, I couldn't, I told him, take him away. I, don't tell me where he is. Because I would, I would go be with him. But then the madness would take me too. And I, I had to have found help for him. I couldn't be by, I couldn't be with him. Because, well, what if I was with him, maybe the madness would take me. Maybe I would start hearing it. And then if I got it, what if it took me and I went mad also? I can't go mad. I have our whole Herring Hall to take care of. We have orphans. Well, I, I suppose, oh, Ingrid. Ingrid, she can take care of them. She takes care of the orphans. What? But what about her name? What, what do you mean? What, could you, my, what do my, you my, mean my... You, get, you would get mad? Has someone else been mad? Is there no one to take care of your son? Who will take care of my son? I have to take care of my son. He is my son. But you have not seen him? Have I not seen him? You have not seen him? You have been away? You have sent them away to be taken care of? Yes, I I had them take him away to uh, a safe place where he couldn't hurt himself. Where he couldn't hurt anybody else. Has he hurt people? Well, he, 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 he could. He has it within him. Oh, maybe I spoiled the boy. Maybe I... What have I done to him? What have I done to our name? You are a very good man. You take care of the children that have nowhere to go. This work is very important. Not everyone can or will step up to do this. This is a good thing, regardless of how your offspring have have chosen their past. Yes? This is you. You are there for more. There is more people that you have taken care of and given good lives to. Did you want to say something, Erica? I'm just thinking of what to say. <laughs> Can I do a check of some sort to kind of Absolutely. look at like the room and see like... Uh... I want to make a medicine check, honestly. Oh, good. Good idea. I like a medicine check. I'll take a medicine check. I'll take a lore check. And I am going to flip a light side point to upgrade. All right. You know, I'm going to do a lore check. Uh, yellow, green, green. Uh, let's lore check. Oh, wait. Yellow, let us. Yellow, you're green. doing a lore check. Let us go uh, make it two purple. And I'm flipping a light side back. And make it a red. A lore check. Okay. Uh, a boost die. Uh-huh. For having just calmly observed him and uh, the room and for observation of his mannerisms. Yeah, when they let Ula talk. (laughs) I will allow it. Yeah. Hi, welcome to uh, Play With Erica, (laughs) where uh, all we do is wash the laundry. (laughs) (laughs) No. I get the washboard out. Tomorrow is laundry day. (laughs) (laughs) Because we're playing today. Okay, so, and then the other the other check that you wanted uh-huh. was a knowledge check? What was it? Well, I just did a knowledge she check. She did the, the okay. knowledge lore check. Uh, do you want, you said you wanted to do, a, like, a medicine check? I can, yeah, I'll try, I'll try a medicine check. That sounds good to me. Um, so I'll I have flip three on green. You. All right. And I'll flip on you. So that'll be green, 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 red purple purple 
So then, so then I can flip back and, and turn get... one of your G's to a one of your greens to a yellow. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> what would you want to do with the two advantages? All right. So uh, let's let's go with a let's talk about the lore check and the medicine after that. So with the lore check, as you gaze around the room, looking to see what sort of magics or knowledge, if it was something befuddling him like that, right? You do not see that he has any extra magics that's extra of what most people have. He doesn't seem like a reader. He seems more like just a straight hunter, almost as if he's living off the name of his predecessors, his family. The medicine, you cannot determine if it's this is a contagious disease or if it's what sort of uh, malady it could be. But what would you like to do with those two advantages? Like, can I tell whether or not it is magic or not? That is, that is, or you said I can't tell if it's magic or whether or not it's contagious, right? Is that what you said? Correct. You cannot okay. tell. Okay, okay. So then, um, can I tell whether or not, like, are there are there dishes that he is like eating? Like, is he thin or not, or is he hurting himself in any way? Okay. Because it has to relate to medicine, right? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Rough, roughly, roughly, yeah. or there could be something else. You notice that the water that he gets is fresh. And that he has fresh food that is just lying there. Barely any of it eaten. With two advantages, you can notice that it is hot in here. Mm-hmm. So the environment is not cold. Okay. There is so it's not fire. cold outside. It's just particularly it's, it's oh. not cold in this room. It is cold okay. outside of this room. Okay. Because uh, it in is the room it's wet. sweltering. The, yes. Okay. So... Is, can he, I he can I put and it's hot so yeah go ahead can I put my hand like take his hand in my hand uh-huh. and and just be like I will go seek out your son and I will look to see if there is anything that I can help with but you know that like I am just a mechanic. I don't know much about sickness, and um, my friend here, they know just little bits, but they are very knowledgeable in lore. And so if this is something that has cursed your son or your family, we will we will find it. And as they touch, I want to know if, like, are they, uh, like, is he freezing? Is he, like, super cold or, like... Yes, as you grab his long, uh, almost wax paper uh, hands, they are freezing. They're cold to the touch, and they have a shiver about them. And he he goes, yes, that's exactly why I I called you. You see, see, Eith had that mechanical hand. Yes, I, I made it. I know. That's especially why Rowley said he heard metal scraping on stone. S- metal and stone. Why? That's why you two are being called metal and stone. I don't metal know. Metal stone. You're metal. They are mm. stone. We will leave you to your rest now, Mr. Button yes. Whistle. Yes, if I might yes, advise I, I, you, however, you can't pour from an empty cup. Eat your meal. Drink your water. We will take care of your sons. Oh, th- thank you. Thank you. And be careful of them. They're, they're not kind, but they're all I have. They're all I have. Thank you for listening to Tales from the Grey Library. Thank you to AJ for running this adventure, and Erica and Amanda for playing it. If you're liking Tales from the Grey Library, be sure to listen to The Other Place and The Fenrain Files. The Other Place follows a new group of adventurers each season, 
as they try to save the world from an apocalypse of the dead. And in the Fenrain Files, we explore the world even further from an outside perspective, looking down at its history, people, and places. Tales from the Grey Library is produced by Nightcast Creative. For more about us and the other things that we make, visit nightcastcreative.com.